Hi, this is Paul Neal from Pen Productions, and today I'm going to take a look at a method for modeling cars. This is probably going to be a series of videos um, that I'm going to need here to step through all of the steps. I'm going to be discussing everywhere from car modeling techniques to hotkeys you should be using um, to how to source and find, uh, you know, really good uh, blueprints to be able to work from and how to set them up accurately and model accurately in 3ds Max. And in this case, I'm um, I'm now using 2023.2.2 for the modeling. Let's get started on this. Uh, I'm modeling this uh, absolutely gorgeous AMG um, uh, Mercedes. It is uh, SLS. It's fantastic. Got gold wing doors and everything. And it's just a cool looking vehicle. Um, partway into it here, I have uh, I'm roughing in all of the forms and shapes. You'll notice by this, I actually have lots of separate objects going on. Something I do a lot when I'm modeling is work with separate objects and not try and build a vehicle or something that's made in the real world out of millions of parts and make it out of one continuous surface. So if you're new at modeling and you believe that uh, poly models should be one object, it's absolutely incorrect. It is not the way to go about modeling um, elements like this. Sometimes I will model them together and then break them apart later. Sometimes that's easier. Other times it's easier to keep them apart. But for instance, glass is not the same piece as the hood in an actual car. Neither is the logo. And all of these elements are far easier to model as separate entities, just like they were made in the real world. So when you're wondering what you should break off, just think about how the vehicle was actually produced in the real world, and you'll realize it's far easier to model it with the same methodologies as the real world has used. Now, reference material. Cars are really, really complex. You know, it seems kind of simple at first. It's this solid surface, um, but realistically, they are full of compound contours, crisp edges, soft edges. You know, they're mixed. They're, they're flexing in all kinds of different ways, and they're built out of panels and pieces. And so one of the things you want to make sure that you can do for the vehicle that you choose is to be able to find lots of reference for it. Now, you know, like I was saying with the uh, idea of having panels and pieces, you can see that this panel of the vehicle is actually a completely separate panel than the bottom part of the vehicle. Matter of fact, that's a separate panel as well. Okay, the whole front of the hood coming up to here is a separate piece, you know, separate pieces of chrome, separate logos. It's not stamped out of one impossible piece of geometry. Things like the lights and the turn signals and, you know, the, the logo on the side, whatever it might be, are all separate pieces and far easier built as separate pieces. Now, once you've got your reference, make sure you have it from absolutely all angles you can find. It's good to see it with the doors open. It's good to be able to see it from the top and understand what it looks like. You want to be able to see it from the back. You want to be able to see it from the front and every side possible. Now, in my 3ds Max project uh, that I've started with, I have in my images folder, I have grabbed a couple of sets of blueprints. Now, I started with this one here, and it has a, a severe problem is that it's only 1000 by 707 pixels. So at 100%, this looks like this. Now, if you zoom in on it, it starts getting very, very blurry, and it becomes harder and harder to see what you're looking at. So images this small really don't work. I managed to find another one for this vehicle that's 2000 by 2421, and it's a different layout, but it is much higher resolution. So at 100%, it looks like this. So it's much cleaner. It means if I zoom in the same amount on this, um, in this case, it's into uh, 300%, um, you'll see it's still relatively clean. I can see what's going on with the parts and the complex areas, and it's much better to be able to work with. Now, uh, the other difference here was, is this is the uh, ragtop version. This is the hardtop version, and I wanted the hardtop version anyway. So luckily, I found the, uh, uh, the the blueprint for this. The other thing with the blueprints is you want to make sure that they are complete and set up correctly. In other words, when you look at the uh, blueprints, you've got a uh, orthographic views of the front the back, the side, and the top. You need all of them to be able to model correctly. 
It also needs to be relatively complete with uh, other shapes here. Like for instance, the side here is a bit of a problem because I can't see where the door panels lie in the side view. So I'm having to sort of guess at that based on the, the photographs. I could go in and draw that in as well, which would be a really good idea uh, to be able to clean that up. But these are complete. They also line up perfectly. So I can see that the front of the car lines up with the front of the car. And then the sides, same thing. They all line up together, and this makes it far easier to set up. Now, inevitably, what you're going to find is, is most of these blueprints have not been made by the car manufacturers. They've been made by a third party, and they are a little bit of guesswork um, into themselves anyways. So sometimes they don't 100% line up. Uh, this one's pretty good, and I'm going to show you how to set that up next. So now over in 3ds Max, let's get started in setting up the planes that we're going to need. First off, make sure that you are working to a unit setup that makes sense. And in this case, I'm currently reading centimeters, uh, but my um, unit setup is set to centimeters. If you're working in inches, then great, stick with inches. It really doesn't matter where uh, what you're working with, uh, but as long as you're actually reading those measurements and paying attention to them when we get the car started. Now, if we go back over to the vehicle, you'll see that I have measurements already on here. So this is another good thing to be able to find in your um, uh, uh, blueprints is actual knowledge of the size of them. So these are in uh, meters, uh, this is a, a full meter here. So this is in centimeters uh, listed in the car. So what I can do is I can be starting off and ensuring that I have set up uh, the car at the right scale. That is really important because a lot of tools and a lot of things you might go and do next when you put this into an environment, you know, you decide that you want to do some sort of simulations in it. Um, the, the scene needs to be the right scale and it's always best just to simply start at the right scale as opposed to trying to fix it later because that can be a problem with having to reset pivots with having to remove pivots into the right places and having to mess around with the angles of pivots it's just not a fun process to fix later it's much easier to get started first so in here then um, we're going to work in in this case i'm going to work in centimeters we're also going to ensure that we have our car lined up the right way. I'm amazed at how many people don't do this. And so I have this currently set up. You'll notice this is the top viewport. Uh, Hotkey is pretty simple on this. It's T. I'll just hit to Z to zoom extents. You can see that it's pointing forward in the scene. This is the front viewport. I'm looking at the front of the car. The left viewport, I'm looking at the left of the car. Something else to note, if I turn on the grid with G, the vehicle sits dead center. It is sitting on the ground, so it's sitting on the zero of the Z. Okay, so that also helps with a lot of things. And in the front view, of course, it's also going to appear as sitting directly on the center of the scene. These things are very important for making your life easy and making things go faster later. As this vehicle gets more and more complex, if you ignore this thinking that you don't need to do these steps to get started, you're simply going to make it much harder, much more difficult to build a complex vehicle as it starts to move forward in the construction. So I'm going to start off with uh, setting up the um, left viewport. Okay, so I'm going to need a plane. I just uh, control right clicked plane and I'm going to drag out a plane. Now we can take a good uh, stab at understanding the size here because we have them right here, four, six, three, eight. So if I go into max and I type in the length and type in uh, four, six, three, eight, that is going to be the length of my car in the scene. Now, what I also want to do is make sure that this is currently sitting on zero and then it is going to be eventually sitting on um, uh, zero on the ground. So it's probably going to be up here somewhere because we don't know its height per se. I don't know if that's actually on here. Uh, looks like it is 1261. Check that against this side here and see if it also, uh, yeah, 1262 it says on here. So this is the hardtop version. So let's, we may as well set that correct now as well. So 1262, so 1262. 
And then I'm going to make sure it sits on the ground for now. Let's make that visible in the viewport. And so that is F3, obviously, and F4 for the wireframe. And I'm going to take all the segments out of this. I don't want the clutter in my scene. So um, I'm going to pop back to uh, our blueprints and just minimize this. By the way, I'm using a free image viewer I find fantastic. Been around forever. It's called Faststone Image Viewer, um, and it's very, very handy. I'm just going to drag and drop this material on here, okay? So you can see that this is stretched. Now, what people tend to do is they tend to try and change the uh, you know, geometry to fix that, and they guess again. We don't want to guess. We don't want to guess at all. So I'm going to add a modifier here, and that is going to be under UV coordinates, and that is going to be the UV map, not the unwrap modifier, but the UV map modifier. It's a modifier that allows us to be able to apply things like planar mapping. So it fits to the, v, uh, to the geometry to start with. But if you scroll on down, we actually have a bitmap fit, which means we can go and find a bitmap, head on into our scene assets, images, and grab the image that we're going to work on. And you'll see now it is the correct aspect ratio. So it doesn't fit our plane anymore, but it's the correct aspect ratio. One on the keyboard to get into the sub-object gizmo. One, two, three, four, five will get you into all sub-objects of all modifiers and base objects. And we're going to go to scale and always scale in the X and Y, never one or the other, because you're just stretching the vehicle again. So we need this side. Now, one of the things is when you're looking at the left viewport, um, we have to understand where the front viewport, that is that direction there, the front viewport. So this car is the opposite way around in this case. So to flip that over, I can uh, drop right into the UV unwrap and just hit flip, or you could type in negative one, but flips obviously easier. Now I'm going to scale up my vehicle and move it around and get it to the point where it fits this card. So back to the scale. I know it's got to be the same length as this, and that's pretty darn close. I could play with it some more. Now, you know, I'm starting to clip off the ends, and we might want to adjust that a little bit and, uh, and you know, get it closer. There we go. That's not too bad. Now, we want to make sure we don't clip off the ends. So don't collapse the stack on these. Again, another problem I see with a lot of modelers, they want to collapse the stack on everything down to an editable poly, and that's just the wrong way to model in Max. It's incredibly procedural. You have to use the modifier stack to your advantage. So if we step back in the stack to the plane below the UVW uh, map modifier, you can see that I can actually change the length and width now of the card without affecting the actual um, uh, UVs. They stay the same in this case, but that is not scaling it. It's, it's utilizing the length and width. The next thing we want to do is make sure this is see-through. We can kind of see through this quite a bit. Let's right-click Object Properties. So in your Object Properties, there's visibility. I'm going to stick mine at about a 0.2, I guess. The other thing I'm going to turn on is, um, you know, back face cull so I can see through from the other side. But I may not want to do it with this side panel, but we'll come back to that. But one for sure is going to be visibility or, or sorry, renderable. For some reason, that takes the visibility down. I'm not sure why, but uh, it turns it off. So you have to change the visibility before you change the renderable for some reason. But this now allows us to be able to see through. I can check my wheels and check that ground plane and make sure that I'm sitting on it. It looks like it's pretty good. I can see the top of the car. And again, if I really want, I can go about, um, you know, changing the uh, you know size of it down below it in the stack. So that has the um, side of the car working perfectly. I'm going to click on it. Go into uh, rotate, uh, you know, E on the keyboard, turn on my angle snap with A on the keyboard, and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, and we're going to say copy because we have to make changes to this. Now, this one is going to be the top of the car, so I'm going to go to the top viewport and make sure it's uh, I'm seeing the shaded view. And back into the sub-object level of the UV map, and then we can easily just drag the car into the top view. Now, once I drag it in, I don't want to accidentally drag it side to, or up and down, so I've only grabbed it by the X. I want to go in and grab it 
here and move it, but if you notice, I can't move it. Easiest way to do that is to lock your um, uh, your your selection. So spacebar, lock selected, and your now your tool now will work. It doesn't need to be over the uh, over the um, uh, uh, you know uh, X Y Z. So I'm going to go along and check anything I can check on the car and try and make sure it's as centered as possible. Looks like it is. It looks like that's pretty good and that is in the center now obviously once again this plane needs to be wider so we can easily just give it the width that we require and push it out sideways now we need to uh, do the exact same thing uh, uh, with the um, the front and back so i'm going to unlock my selection again with the space bar rotate still have my angle snap on 90 degrees and then front viewport so this is going to be the front three in the keyboard again and so now it's going to be moving this around to find that front view so I'm going to come down find the front view make sure it is on the ground the same way looks like that is and I'm going to move it in I'm going to lock my viewport again and I'm going to make sure that I am on that center line as best I possibly can that looks pretty good and now this is the one I don't want to be seeing the front when I'm looking at the back. So in this one, I'm going to go into object properties and turn on back face cull. And then I'll cull the back faces of the geometry so that you don't see it. Now back into uh, rotate. I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees around to the other side. And now when I look at the back, which there is no hotkey for, because T is top, P is perspective, F is front, L is left, all we have to do is press V and we get those, or we can reach all the way up here if we want to be looking at which view viewport that we uh, want to go to, but I find it far easier to tap that, go to the back viewport. And same thing here, I'm going to um, take a look at that back view. So this is going to be my plane four. So once again, my back view, and I'm going to slide this whoop, the uh, uh, gizmo sideways. And again, I'm just going to lock the selection and make sure that I am as centered as I possibly can be. Now, here's something to note. Um, this ground plane looks like it's higher up. So this is where I was saying that sometimes these drawings just don't fit together properly. You can see this entire one has been bumped up and the ground is no longer on the ground. So I'm actually going to go down, just initialize my Y and slide it down. Looks like I managed to bump it off of center as well. Make my X active. There are hotkeys actually for that too. I think they're by default five, six, seven for X, Y, Z. And um, as far as I know, I think, because I'm in ho default hotkeys right now. Yes, they are. Um, five, six, F5, X, F6, F7, and I believe F8 um, rotates through them, you know, toggles around through them all. So that looks pretty good. So these are all now uh, set up correctly. Just going to unlock my selection select them all and it, you'll actually you know what i'm going to go and change the width of this because that just doesn't need to be that wide um, i'm going to trim that down and again i'm going to trim this one down and you can see why i haven't uh, moved the plane side to side to do this because this is now really easy to be able to work with because my planes are all centered in the zero so there you go so that looks all pretty good i'm going to pick all these and we're then going to make sure that we have, uh, you know, a layer that is uh, set. And this is going to be blueprints. And one of the things I'm going to do as well on this is I'm going to right click again on all of them. OK, so I've got them all selected at this point. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to change their display properties by layer instead of by object. So now what I can do is I can hide and unhide them, um, you know, by the uh, or freeze and unfreeze them by the uh, you know layer here. Now with the layer, I'm going to go and right click properties and I'm going to say show frozen in gray off. So I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't uh, freeze them and then turns them gray and I can't see them. So now when I freeze them. 
they're frozen, but I can still see them. Okay, so that's an, uh, you know, a, a trick that allows you to be able to work with them. Some people move these front and back. I certainly do sometimes as well, but often I just like them dead center like this and leave them all centered in the middle of the uh, of the scene. Entirely depends on how you like to work that way. But the fact is they're all centered, they're all lined up. But you can see where I've got a couple of discrepancies already. You can see the top of the car isn't uh, touching, but in the front viewport, it is touching. So there's obviously some issues there. It looks like I'm seeing through to the other. Uh, maybe I didn't have. Oh, of course, because I didn't turn on um, back face call, which is going to back face all of them, unfortunately, in this case, because I'm by layer. You could have left them uh, as the individuals if you wanted to. So there you go, I've got them, but they're not lined up. So this is again, one of those issues, the grid on, it looks like these ones are sitting uh, in the right spots. You know, if I look at the left, that ground plane might be a little bit lower down. So I'm gonna just go and fix that first. It looks like the drawings might be different in that the line on the ground is drawn uh, at the ground level, the bottom is at the ground level in the side views, but in the front and back view, it looks like it's actually sitting on, the tires are sitting on top of it. So that could be my uh, discrepancy here. Now, something else I've done here is I'm picking these, um, they're frozen, but I can still select them and work with them. So it's kind of a, a nice way to be able to work so here's another trick for checking whether or not you're lined up correctly. Uh, we all know about orbiting, holding down Alt in your middle mouse button, and you can orbit around into an orthographic viewport. I'm just gonna hit G to get rid of the grid. I'm gonna go to my left viewport, and I'm gonna start orbiting, but I'm gonna hold down Shift right away. And what you'll see is it actually has locked it to an up and down. You can see the icons changed. And in doing so, you can kind of try and see if you're getting things aligned and matching as you expect. I can kind of see the front and back of the cars aligned up pretty good. And that works. I'm gonna go into left, start orbiting sideways, hold down the Shift as I start to orbit. And we can start to determine whether or not those are matching the way they should. And they look pretty good now. I can see the bottom, looking at the bottom of the car, I'm looking at the top of the car, trying to make sure that they look like they have an alignment. Closer they are, the better it is. There you go, your cards are set up and we can start modeling from here.